Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Iron Man Experience, a podcast about society, art, entertainment, music, sports, geopolitics, pets and everything else around life. In this episode, we review the recently released movie Kala. This will be a 100% spoiler review in case you haven't watched it. You should hit the pause button now, go watch the movie and then come back and tune in to this podcast. To review a movie like Kala, you probably need to get into a separate mindset and a podcast like AMX could be a better place. AMX by design is a slow burn podcast. So sit back, relax and let's dive in and explore Kala. When you visit a Michelin star restaurant, the expectations are quite high. In simple terms, if you have food at a roadside stall vis-a-vis in a, at a five, fine dining restaurant, the expectations differ, isn't it? The attention to detail, the fine tuning, the aesthetic, the ambience, the way the cutleries are presented, the size of the cuts that you get on your served on your plate the taste the texture everything and so if you follow fine dining or fine cuisine you know that a michelin star rating is awarded to some of the best in class within the michelin star rating you have star 1 or 2 stars and then 3 stars and i'm paraphrasing here you probably need to take a detour to enjoy this restaurant which is rated as one of the highest michelin stars hang on but i thought we were reviewing kala well the reason i wanted to predicate this review of kala with the analogy of a michelin star restaurant is because when you enjoy fine cuisine at the highest level then you have to wear a particular hat view the movie with a particular lens slip into a particular mood without which this movie will not speak to you let me be a little more explicit here if you're looking for or if you come from a mindset which is busy which requires introduction body conclusion which requires action reaction which requires cause and effect or result then you may may not do justice to this movie your mind will not receive the movie it is meant to be received so it's important that we recalibrate the mindset with which we want to watch this movie so what is this recalibrated mindset first up this movie requires you to sit back relax watch this movie alone if you can if not use a noise cancelling headphone if not watch it only and only with those people who have similar tastes and preferences like you in deep subtle nuanced textured cinema you heard that right deep nuanced subtle textured cinema if this is not your cup of tea please do not watch kala it's a prerequisite and i'm not even saying if the movie is good or bad right now don't assume just because i've predicated it with this i'm just trying to set the stage so that you understand the right way to watch the movie i'm not even suggesting that the director anvita dat recommends you to watch it like this way but having watched the movie i thought this is what i could share with some of you people who might see the movie in a very different setting like there are those popcorn entertainers which can be watched when somebody's mobile is going off or you can pause it if somebody rings the doorbell or you know pause it and have grab a quick bite heat up the micro and come back and so on so you get the drift right kala does not deserve those kind of distractions that is the first prerequisite it requires absolute silence 
perhaps darkness in the sense watch it at night and have absolute focus on the entire screen not just on the protagonist or the antagonist or the characters or the entire screen if you are blessed with a large led screen then that's the best way to watch it if you're watching it on a laptop well even then ensure that you have a complete focus on all parts of the screen and i'll tell you why later in this conversation now that the scene is set and you know exactly the mindset to have before watching this movie let's see how we can attempt to understand this movie and review it and mind you my reviews are not very rating oriented because art cannot in general be rated 5 stars or 4 stars and stuff like that there are the way i review or i view a movie is here are the five things that really worked for the movie here are the five things that i thought could have been better now there are instances where this number changes because some movies have five things good and only one or two things bad and some cases there are five things bad and maybe one or two things good and so that's the simplicity yet each of these five points i will do a deep dive and so that you do justice to somebody's effort give it that respect that somebody's thought through whole bunch of things by before presenting it to you on screen you know the visual that comes to my mind is when we were young at school at the assembly line when all the classes and all the sections would stand together for the morning prayers and good thought of the day and often times couple of students were always recognized for some outstanding achievement or attainment and the entire school would stand in unison and clap you know that would was a goosebump moment right the student would be called upon stage and the children in front of them would clap thunderous a thunderous applause followed so <laughs> the reason i gave this analogy is uh, miss uh, anvita dat the director the writer director of this movie is that student which deserves a thunderous round of applause honest clap where without saying much so much has been said without uh telling it and without there being any exposition there has been uh, subtlety there has been storytelling narrative which flows very easily this is not easy this is absolutely not easy work it requires first of all it requires a a ton of class it requires intelligence it requires grip on the subject matter and of course translating all of this which is in her mind to the cast and crew all around that is where the genius is so very very appreciative of this particular effort good job done miss anvita that i will look forward to your future projects and um, you are on notice in the most positive ways because it's very difficult at least in my books and i'm no such great film analyst or critic or anything but i do follow films very closely or the cinematic uh angles very closely not just the main story lines so in my books you have uh, forced your way in with this creation so good job done let's talk about the actors the cast and crew tripti dimri miss tripti dimri i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly and miss swastika mukherji oh my god you know <laughs> roles like these come once in a lifetime hopefully you get more such roles and uh, I, i i have seen some previous work uh, for swastika before and i can only say that when you look back 
this will be probably right up there right, amongst your top 10 if not top 5 um, and i mean you're the best judge for it but i'd probably think that it would rate highly because not just the role the complexity the layers of the role and the way it was executed was near perfect likewise for miss dimri oh my god again i repeated oh my god twice because that's what your performance did and it's very easy to slip in these roles when somebody suddenly finds a very meaty role there is this tendency to overdo the role but you did not so kudos to you and slow motion claps for you as well let's talk about the entire canvas not just the main protagonists we have mr babil khan mr amit sial mr samir kochar git ms gitja oak mr varun grover mr tasveer kamil and ms anushka sharma kohli absolutely beautiful job done you know what happens is the reason i mentioned it as a canvas is because you might have the subject area well done but if the rest of the canvas is not as pretty then the whole image or the whole artwork looks shoddy and in this case kudos to the casting director mr abhishek banerji and mr anmol they did a fantastic job in recruiting these two uh, these um, this cast and crew uh, it's just fantastic so mr banerji and mr ahuja claps for you as well but the support cast think of mr babil khan is being your first movie i think you did a splendid job part of it would have been inherited part of it by practice and hard work and part of it with the brilliance of direction or the inputs from the director so the role that you essayed did have a in big impact in the narrative and it was much appreciated likewise for the rest of the cast and crew each of them played their part without going overboard you know think of mr samir kochar's character or think of uh, mr amit sayal's character these characters could have gone a trifle overboard but they didn't primarily because it was written well no doubt about it but also executed well just because you have a dark side to you does not mean you need to look overbearing with it and the naturalness of the entire cast and crew was consistent with the powerhouse performances of ms dimri and uh, ms mukherjee they just it this balance getting this balance right is the real struggle often times we have very powerful main actors who you know steal the show as it were and you can see that one is trying to outdo the other this was not the case in this particular frame or set of frames if you will and so congratulations to the entire cast and crew technicians people involved behind creating this visual marvel now let's move on to some of the technical details editing by mr manas mithal production design sound design costume set decoration ms vasudha saklani and i'm just reading off uh, imdb here if anyone's name is missing i apologize and their name ought to be updated and the art department and the sound department above all the music mr amit trivedi you did a fabulous job in composing and adding to the narrative and adding to the beauty of this art art form and it was just not mr trivedi there are other people including lyricist mr amita bhattacharya mr varun grover would have had some creative input i'm sure mr swanand kirkire uh, mr shahid malya 
Kausal Munir, and of course, uh, Miss Anvita Dutt as well. And so, it's and, and there are other people as well. I'm just trying to say that how the entire components came together as one beautiful piece of art. It reminds me of another, yet another analogy, and there have been so many analogies in this review already. Think of a Rolls Royce handcrafted and each part is meticulously polished carved out and so any one thing which is out of place would destroy the entire look of the Rolls Royce isn't it so color as a frame as a canvas is something on the lines of a Rolls Royce where not one of those components are out of place So I'm guessing you're thinking, well, if everything is good, what's bad? Let's dive into the areas of improvement. Is there anything bad in particular? I think not. I've, you've heard the first part of it till now. It's incredibly difficult to find out something that is absolutely all right. That being said, you know, one of my fundamental belief system is think of those appraisals. And here goes yet another analogy. And this time it will be a work analogy you know the appraisals that we get on a scale of one to five i was very reluctant to give a five on five not because i don't think people can excel at their jobs but in some sense giving a five on five essentially means there is no further room for improvement right so to me a rating of four on five on appraisals would mean you've done absolutely outstanding excellent work and so with that same analogy i'd say there is room for improvement for Kala as well. And the areas of improvement begin, and, and this is going to be very delicate, very layered. So I'll try and explain it as slowly as I can so that you get the essence of it. These are not necessarily showstoppers or such big flaws that it throws you off guard, but they are areas for Ms. Dutt to think about if ever Ms. Dutt listens to this if you're listening to this Sanvita then th I would love to learn more maybe I'm wrong and I'm happy to stand corrected but I'd love to hear from you and your point of view about some of the areas of improvement first up let's talk about the ambience and the mood of the movie it's got it's closely tied with the editing of it as well and as a first time watcher and i had not seen the trailer so i was not primed up for it and that's why i spent considerable amount of time in this particular review to set the tone for the rest of the people who haven't watched it to reset recalibrate their mind and slip into that zone where they want to watch this kind of a slow burn deep intense narrative and so i was not at the right frame of mind at the start and so the first 15 minutes it took me some time to bite into it and when i rewatched it i thought i thought the feeling will go away because i was not prepared the first time but the second time around i i had a similar feeling and i it struck me why is that it's because it dives in too quickly into deep waters. I think somewhere um, the idea is to entice the audience, the viewer, and think of it as a spiraling whirlpool and it takes you into this inward journey and takes you to the deepest, darkest places. So somewhere right at the start, the framing of it, the way I was visualizing it when I watched it again was there could have been some bright shots, air quotes on that, like daylight shots with which eases you into that world, which eases you into that atmosphere and slowly, you know, gently handholds you into it because your narrative was such, right? Your narrative was not supposed to be a knee jerk reaction. So somewhere I thought, the first 15 minutes, there could have been maybe a couple of more scenes 
atmospheric scenes still shots if you will which could ease you into the narrative or they could have been some sweet nothings if you will and so those that that was for one part second observation was couple of cgis which didn't look all those all all that authentic especially the one where the snowflake falls on the microphone It's a bit later in 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 the movie these are not show stoppers like i said but they catch your eye because remember this is a michelin star restaurant so the expectations are super high when you have spent time in set design in costume design in lighting in camera angles then little more budget on the vfx would have made it a little more realistic that that was the second observation the third observation was the background score i think i had heard this on mind hunter it's also a netflix series where especially in that scene where uh, the character kala is seen exiting from the party and there are feathers and black feathers ala black swanish swanesk kind of a setup uh, and the background score there was probably i th- if I, i i might be wrong there but if it is an original creation then wow uh, i do recall having heard it elsewhere and so i will double check on that but i do think it was from mind hunter so as long as you've paid royalty as long as if you've uh, acknowledged in credits then that i i did not uh, I, i might have missed it in the credits uh, i'd probably go rewatch it but not to be labor the point but that was the other thing that stood out the third thing that stood out to me was the character arc of the mother from the start and in the end the very little time was spent on the trigger quotient that i wanted a child a male child and i lost the male child that scene you did portray but very little time because the whole movie hinged or that was a pivotal point in the movie wasn't it where when she sees that the twin child died and there's this voice over narrative the doctor says that the stronger one survived and the weaker one died you could have built up a little bit more i don't know if it was a creative decision to edit out some supporting documents if you will or supporting scenes in that where it could have built more into the narrative it's like a mini spiral that she it's not that she hated children but this was the trigger point which led into a postpartum which led into a depressive behavior and it set in as a permanent fixture in her mind in the mother's mind because to have a lifelong uh, apathy lifelong uh, pain the introductory scenes were perhaps hu- hurried up a little bit somebody needed to slow it down add some more scenes where this fact would have been st- established a bit more stronger is is my two cents to it and therefore when the character arc came in towards the end uh, when the person is realized that uh, the child is in distress and it's already too late it didn't sit well as much i'd rather have that she did not take that phone call and not turn up in uh, at the hospital or at, 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 to see her daughter and that would have been true to the quote unquote coldness or the distance that the mother had for the daughter but it was somewhere contradictory and if you had to show that then there had to be a series of other events which showed the gradual degeneration or breaking out 
degeneration wouldn't be the word i think emerging out would be a better expression that yes i was under this depressive state and this unknowing dislike uh, for the daughter and now i realize what wrong i was doing and so i thought that could have been fleshed out a little bit more i don't know if you were mindful about the total run time uh, and all those other factors but if that was not the case then somewhere i think these scenes could have added another say 10 15 minutes of footage at best but it would have made the story look a little more complete the other area of improvement that i it caught my eyes from a consistency standpoint was it it had a himachali slash kashmiri you we were writing songs in urdu on the music book uh while there was a calcutta connection see himachal pradesh and kolkata as a story concept is a bit bit of an apple and orange and no pun intended there uh it could it could be darjeeling and kolkata or simla and delhi you know you know what i'm saying right so or manali and you know kasol i don't know so but in this case it was a little odd i i wouldn't use a strong word like jarring but little odd that this was a definitive setup while you also think i mean kolkata also had a, a movie industry no doubt but if you had to show it in mumbai where all the movie action was happening then the hill station concept would or the snow would have been very difficult so so i get it but uh, himachal pradesh and kolkata didn't sit all that well with me um the uh, the character the babil's character uh, that character i mean it's babil's first film so one would have to give a certain degree of latitude uh, to the young gentleman i mean he did a good job i don't uh, discount that but that character itself needed to probably have a few more scenes as to or, or a, a back story uh, and i know it was there was a, a voice over which uh, which was narrated but for a a character to be so pivotal in the larger scheme of things needed to be fleshed out a little bit more there could have been some more s- scenes um which would have given a little bit of a character arc to babel's character as well is is what i'm saying and finally the main character very difficult to critique um tripti dimri's um, character kala but i also found that uh the nervousness could have been captured not just facially but i think you had one scene where she was clenching her fist or forearm if i'm not mistaken i think i would have loved to see some scenes where you know we have this nervous twitch or we scratch off the skin from our thumbs um or some of those classical nervousness uh, related uh, examples that would have given some more texture to the character other than focusing on the close ups the facial close ups because uh, it did get slightly repetitive when i say slightly if i can quantify it probably two times more if there were 10 instances of close up shots on the face where uh, the protagonist is choking or feeling nervous probably cut it down by two or three and because as an audience you're like i i get it i get the message or you show a different variant to the nervousness one is a physical facial close up the other could be a long shot the other could be uh a blurred shot from behind i don't know there could be multiple ways of capturing the nervousness and so it did get a bit repetitive uh, repetitive towards the end and um, and so i I, th- i thought a bit of fine tuning there could have uh overall made the film a bit more tighter 
than it seemed uh, when you zoom out of it. Anyhow, the idea is not to nitpick, right? But like I said, this is a Michelin star level serving and therefore it requires that fine eye. And there were some more um, sprinkled here and there. I The, the smoking scene where uh, Tripti Dimri's character goes into the courtyard and uh, she hasn't smoked before and she's pretending to uh, do a good job of it. That scene could have... Uh, could have had a slightly different connotation to it and it was almost uh, going there to be bold and yet not being bold in fact that a, a similar sequence carries on when uh, on on the balcony and you have a howrah bridge uh, as a backdrop that that was a bit jarring uh, the gargoyle part of it was well appreciated but uh, uh, the frustration, the pain wasn't long enough in that scene. You know, post uh, the act of oral sex, that particular sequence could have been a little more traumatic and hard-hitting for the audience. I mean, as it is, uh, Kala, uh, Tripti Dimri did a good job in depicting the disgust, the hurt the pain but again this required a little more creativity little more uh, nuance uh, additional nuance to hit the nail you know these are the powerful moments and you want to drill it inside without bearing being overbearing and and i know the, i'm probably asking the moon and the stars here <laughs> but forgive me for that but i i thought it could have had additional uh and it, the fact that, or, or let's let's just say the flow of the sequence was such that the gap between that act and then the media room where, or the studio where she goes and sings a peppy number, this transition needed a scene that how did she then switch herself on towards feeling a peppy number? That question was not answered. The scene ended at the balcony and then opened in that. And yes, you can say I that was by design. I left it to the imagination. But it was a critical moment that how did you manage to overcome? Because the previous three times you were nervous as shown. And that's why I thought if uh, you were nervous while this before singing that song, something happened which did not. It was not like a fun encounter that you had that it livened up your mood. On the contrary, it was a very traumatic experience. So how does that work then that you have a traumatic experience and then suddenly turn up bubbly and chirpy and lively and sing a peppy number? So something must have happened. Something must have changed in the interim, which was not shown. And so just a just a thought like i said hindsight is always 2020 but yeah i'd love to hear um if you had any thoughts on that well that's all the time i had for this review there are a few more things that will emerge once i spend time and i, and I must confess you know i watched this movie earlier today and i I promised myself that I would review it the next day. I usually do it a day or two later so that it sinks in. And one of the true tests of good cinema is that if it, if there is a residue, which you don't need to struggle hard to remember even after two days or three days. And in this particular instance, when I thought I'd probably record this episode tomorrow morning, I just couldn't sleep right now. You know, it, it's late in the night here. I could not sleep and so if my voice is uh, sounding sleepy it's for a reason because it's way past midnight and I'm having this recording when it's absolutely quiet when the dog is not barking when the pressure cooker is not on when there is general quietness to myself get into that zone into the mood and so I 
had to do this now uh, and I will revisit this later and probably add have an addendum so request any of the listeners listening to this if you enjoyed listening to this slow burn easy going almost like a soliloquy discussion I mean it's an oxymoron there please make sure to check back in maybe a week or 10 days time if I have made any additions to this narrative well I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you do please leave a comment idea thought suggestion once you have seen the movie in depth in detail and if this kind of narrative helped you appreciate the movie slightly better and once you've watched it you have a, a, a an understanding and then you've listened to this podcast and you go back and watch the movie see if you find if it enhances your movie watching experience and do let me know you know where to reach me on my social media handles hashtag ionisms that's a a y a n i s m s on twitter or facebook you can leave me a voice message below on this link until we meet the next time stay well stay safe and take care of yourself this is your host ian and you are listening to the ian man experience peace out <laughs>